What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud, getting ready for my first battle for the Raid on Triton campaign that myself and Ryan from Red Chair Painting are doing. So I'm gonna show you here my before picture of when I'm gonna be what I'm gonna be working on tonight, and we'll do a little time lapse video and see how far I'm able to get. All right, so I'm gonna um, switch my camera, put it up on the left side of my table where it usually sits, because I'm holding it right now, and uh, we're gonna get to work. Okay, here's where I started my adventures in painting these Death Corps of Kriegers. They were already undercoated with this uh, light gray, I guess, primer or air gun paint, so I just simply decided to paint over that using a base coat of Dark Reaper. And uh, when I do my painting tutorial, I think I'm actually going to do it on a unprimered model since everybody's going to be, if, if you start with a Death Corps of Krieg guy, you're going to start with a a model that doesn't have this light grayish tone to it. So uh, some of them you might see flashes of color on already because they were what the previous owner had painted before I got them. Um, but I'll just be walking through the colors that I used and then uh, you can actually see me apply them in real time using the uh, tutorial that I'm going to be producing coming up. So these are a lot of models to paint in a short period of time and I didn't get to all of them so for those of you who've already watched my raid on Triton battle report the first one you'll see that sadly I didn't have all of them ready for the game uh, but that's okay I guess uh, you know when you you strap for time uh, you gotta do just what you can so for those of you who don't know the Death Corps of Creed can be purchased from Forge World or uh, anybody who has them up for sale on eBay and is trying to get rid of them. And there are three different sculpts for them. They're not like the Cadian or Catachins or other multi-plastic parts kits produced by Games Workshop. They have uh, specific builds and they usually go together only a you know, in certain ways, because the way they are built, the heads are already attached to the bodies, and the torsos, I should say, are already attached to the legs. So the only thing you're really attaching are all the extra kit, like the backpacks, the pouches, the entrenching tools, and the uh, arms with the weapons. So the different kinds of sculpts you can get are the ones that show them advancing, like this guy walking forward. Uh, they also have running legs, and I think there are there's a sculpt for the Death Corp Krieg squad that is firing, that have the the weapons all raised, or like this guy kneeling down and in a firing position. And you've got ones with them where they are at ease. So th I think those are the coolest, and they're a little bit more expensive because they're just standing around looking really cool and awesome with their gas masks. Those are for those of you who want to take the time to... Oh look, I'm watching a video on YouTube. Those of you who want to take the time to actually uh, put together different squads, like make the advancing squad the one that your foot's logging across the board, or do the uh, addies or firing squads for those that are camping on an objective, it gives you a more narrative reason to group the different squads together. I think for myself, I, I remember pl playing the game, there were just so many troops on the board. Uh, it was hard enough trying to keep track of where my Vox and my sergeants were. Um, having to keep track of all the different bodies on the field is... It's a fun, it's, it, it's a fun thing to do, but it's a challenge. Now I decided to uh, get to work on this auto cannon. So these... The auto cannon was made from like I said, Acadian um, auto cannon heavy weapons team, and a secret weapons miniatures base, and then two bodies of grenadiers, or the uh, I guess you could call them the veterans. So I did the coats there in Dark Reaper. I get got started with the the shoes on Mornfang Brown. And then I decided to paint the weapon itself and all of the green metallic things, kind of like the Cadian kits and those are done with I believe Castellan green which is the new uh, catechin green uh, 
I decided to get back to work with the Browns by doing the Rackarth Flesh Leg Bindings. Yeah, for this this little stretch of painting, I decided to go with the um, like a batch painting kind of style. So I wanted to get everything as much done as I could before moving on, and then I, I gave up and decided to come back to it later. So now I'm using rust gray to highlight up the trench coats or the great coats, I should say. And because this is still a base coat, bless you! Because this is still a base coat, the uh, the thing that I decided when painting this on, especially once you get to the the gray straps, and Forge World kits are so detailed, the straps on their backpacks, they go under, it's like they put the backpacks on and then they, they put their shoulder epaulets over the straps. So the straps themselves are so thin and um, you have to paint over them. So what I found with doing these these uh, highlights and these first base coats, here's a mortar team that I'm working on, is that the base coats, the thing I kept telling myself is base coats don't matter. Don't worry if you get them places they're not supposed to be. Just as long as your paint isn't too thick, just get the paint on the miniature because uh, base coats are usually the longest step when you're doing a batch painting army to get the color up from whatever the primer undercoat is. Um, I'll get back more to base coating later when I get back to the rest of these guys, but this is where the, ba the rust gray really starts to be a little bit more important when you're painting them onto models that are shaded. So these guys were shaded with Agrax Earthshade, and now I'm just trying to paint the rust gray on top of them and make them a little bit brighter. This is what I'm using. I think it's uh, Death World Forest to bring the highlights up on the gun. It has a little bit of that same color tone but is um, also a little bit yellow so it creates a nice look of light reflecting off of the metal. Now we're getting back to my guys. I've uh, finished the all of the base coats and now I'm getting on to the Agrax Earthshade Wash. So I used Mornfang Fang Brown for the backpack, uh, Steel Legion Drab for the gas mask, silvers were done with Agrax, uh, oops, with a lead belcher and then washed with Agrax Earthshade. And the metal stock on the gun is actually the same as all the belts and pouches and the boots, so Mornfang Fang Brown. These secret weapons, uh, earth trenches, are so great. If you have carried in granite to make the very natural looking mud color, then that's even better. But um, the next best thing with the new range is called Storm Vermin Fur. It's a very dark brownish gray. And I decided the, the wood planks on the trench work bases here were a little bit too dark, so I'm brightening them up a little bit with Steel Legion Drab. Steel Legion Drab is like a tan-ish earth color, light brown color, but uh, under the light here it kind of looks a little bit more mustardy yellow than it is in real life. And back here, I zoomed out a little bit. Got Commissar Bane there, watching the proceedings in the back. And we're getting on now to the helmets. So the helmets and all the metal plates on the shoulders were done with a mix of lead belcher and black, uh, Abaddon black. I think it's okay. Yeah, I wonder if I might have, if I could do this army again, if I would do it with 
um, just Abaddon black and then silver, uh, a dry brush of silver. But that's okay. It, it creates this really dark looking metal iron, which I think is really cool. But I, I wonder if having a black helmet, kind of like biker helmets, or those, uh, I guess what they're supposed to look like, those German kind of pot helmets might have been a little bit cooler. Yeah, those shoulder pads are really fiddly. When you're assembling your model, you're going to find that uh, gluing or even cutting out the shoulder pads on the left shoulder. They have these pads that go on the left shoulder and they're, uh, they're a little bit fiddly and they're really easy to snap and break when you see them on the, I guess, on the sprue. If you've never worked with Forge World before, you're going to be like, where does this go? Oh, it's a shoulder pad. It remind me of the face masks that come on the Plastic Dwarf set. Now you can see my coffee cup at this point. I've been working for a while and I need I need a coffee. <laughs> um now we're getting on to what is this? Oh more of the more of the browns. So here's where I actually go through all of the uh, painting all of the backpacks and the belts and the they have this thing on the front that's like a um, I guess like a little pack that holds a reader unit for how much air they have left and even though it's so cool most of these models have guns raised up in front of them so they're they're a little bit hard to get to so one thing you might consider if you're not uh, very patient is that you might want to keep the arms detached while you paint and then paint them separately either by securing them onto maybe a piece of cork with some blue tack or just finding some other way to paint the arms off up. Yeah, this is where I found painting the straps is really hard because you've got to paint the brown straps and then you got to paint the little bit of blue for the uh, tabs on their shoulders that go right back over it. And I'm just kind of sitting here like gritting my teeth. Oh, so many to do. So uh, I decided to just kind of whip through these now, uh, getting all the pouches, all the backpacks, all the wood done with Mornfang Brown, and yeah, and all the boots as well. And some of them are raised up, so you're going to have to paint under the bottoms. So while I was doing this, I had YouTube videos playing, I was listening to tactics, I was listening to podcasts, anything you can do to get your mind off the uh, the fact that you're slogging through a bunch of these guys. Because at any point, I could have looked over and seen, oh my gosh, look at all those that I was able to do and look at the amount that I still have to get through. There's, you know, it's really easy to just say, ah, I'm going to take a break and play video games or watch TV or do something else. So if you've got the time to sit down and work on your models, then I found that just a great way to get through the monotony of it is to have something distracting going on in the background. Also, coffee. They're such beautiful models though once you paint them up. And we are done. That's all I was able to get done. So let's look at what I'm going to be bringing to the game. Got an auto cannon here. Still not completely painted, but based pretty nicely. Got my platoon command squad with Vox. Yeah, there's the Vox guy. Got the two mortars for my uh, infantry squads. My platoon command squad, and there's three figures there, and then the two from the auto cannon go into that to make it a total of five. And then I didn't get any work done on the veterans. I wanted to kind of slog through my three infantry squads. I think I did pretty good progress on them. Got all the blues, and all the silver, and all of the... Or not all of the silver, but the, the silver plate for the, for the helmets and for their... Um, 
little hand armor pieces. Plus all the backpacks and the belts. The belts were really hard because, yeah, like I said, getting into there and the little pack on the front is uh, pretty, pretty tricky, intricate work. So base coats are always the things that are gonna take the longest. Uh, I got started on the, the base work over here with the trench basing, but I decided to go for the models instead. So unfortunately, these guys aren't gonna be painted, but hopefully the, the dice gods will not hold that against me and uh, we'll have a great game. So stay tuned for the Radon Triton, our first game, 500 points. Uh, didn't get any work done on the Aegis defense line or the quad gun either. Spent it all, spent all my time working on the infantry. Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the next video.